It's Pat from Seattle Coffee Gear, and today we're gonna to be talking about a few tips and tricks that we've got for the new Solus Scala Zero. So if you've seen the crew review, you kind of already know the basics about this grinder, but if you haven't, it's an update to the Solus Scala. It's gonna be available alongside the original Scala. Uh, it's a little bit higher price, but it has a slightly different set of grind settings, and it also has uh, anti-static technology built in to kind of help control static, which is something that people often have issues with with their home grinders. So, um, Again, if you've seen that video, you kind of know the basics of the features of this machine, but there was a few things that we did want to talk about that will help you if you pick one up to get the most out of using it. One of those things is to understand the timer on this grinder. So this applies to the original Scala as well, but you've got this timer down here that uh, is a little bit strange from the numbering. It starts at zero and then it goes all the way up to 10. You might think that's the amount of seconds that you're grinding, but actually these notches, the one, the circles and then the, the numbers are around a five second difference. So if you wanted about 10 seconds of grind time, you would actually set it to the two. Um, it's a little bit more than five seconds, so you have to play with it a little bit to kind of understand it. But if you're trying to dial it in from a, a specific amount of seconds, know that you know, you'll want two seconds for around 10, and, uh, and around four for 20 seconds, and that will help you get it dialed in. It's a little confusing at first, helpful to know. Another thing to note about this grinder is that unlike the original Scala, this one is tuned a little bit to the finer side of the scale. So it actually has more grind settings than the Scala, original Scala does, even though it looks like it's about the same. There's more notches on the uh, rotation of the hopper. However, they are skewed a little more to the finer side. So on the plus side, this means that you're going to be able to get tighter grinds for if you like doing a like more espresso like AeroPress, or even if you wanna try out grinding for a uh, unpressurized portafilter in something like your Solus Barista Perfetta or similar machine um, in that range. However, what it does mean is that if you're grinding for French press, you might see a little bit less uh, consistency and, and, and slightly less, a, a finer grind on the coarse end. So if you are planning on using it specifically for French press, you can definitely get away with it. But if that's your primary brew method, we might recommend the original Scala over the Scala Zero because of the tighter grind on this one. So the biggest thing about this grinder is the Zero in the name. That's something that I'm sure that everybody's interested in and excited about because again, static is such an issue with a lot of these grinders. So this actually has a anti-ion generator built into the grind path of the beans. And what that does is it charges the grounds so that they don't produce as much static and they don't stick to the walls of the grind chamber, the chute, and the hopper. This is really cool and really effective, but it's important to keep in mind that static in general is largely reliant on the humidity in the room that you're grinding in. So if you're grinding in a particularly dry room, or if you have some weird humidity going on, you might see some sticking in the grind chamber or in, in the, uh, the chute and in the, the hopper specifically. So keep that in mind that if you try it for the first time and it's a little bit of a weird day in terms of the humidity in your grinding environment and you notice some static, that the anti-iron generator is working in there, but sometimes it's just going to have different results based on the ambient humidity. So I'm gonna grind a little bit and we'll take a look and see what we get in here today. Let's see what kind of static we see. So today, virtually no cling to the, the hopper, but I have also had times working in this particular room in the studio where there has been more cling on the inside of the hopper, whether it's been a particularly dry day or, or, or just a little bit strange um, in terms of the humidity level. So um, that's worth keeping in mind. It's, if you see that there are there is still static, it may not be that it's not working. It might just be that it's not able to completely eliminate static given the ambient humidity. So let's take a look too at how to remove the hopper on this and uh, some cord storage stuff that's going on underneath. Make sure, by the way, that whenever you do disassemble the grinder for any kind of cleaning like this, that you unplug it so that uh, you just eliminate any kind of safety risks. 
Okay, so one of the things that you're gonna to wanna to know how to do with your Scala Zero is to remove the hopper and to get access to the burrs. So to remove the hopper, all you need to do is make sure you don't have any beans in, in it, but you're gonna twist it all the way to the left and then it just lifts off. Um, this is gonna give you access to the grind chamber and to the burr set, and then all you have to do to get the burrs out is flip up this little metal ring and pull it up. Uh, then you're gonna get access to the inside of the grinder, which is gonna be really useful for cleaning it out, which is something you're gonna wanna do um, with some regularity. Depends largely on use. Some users may need to clean it out monthly. Some may be able to get away with cleaning it like once or twice a year, it just depends. Uh, so that's really easy to do. Then you just click the hopper back into place. Make sure the teeth are aligned correctly. and then you're good to go. The other cool thing about this that I wanted to show here is, take the top off so it doesn't fall off, but you've got some uh, cable storage down here under the grinder. So you can kind of put the cable in here and whether the grinder's not in use and sitting in a cupboard or if you just don't need the full length of cable, you can use that to kind of tuck some of it away. All right, so that is a bunch of tips and tricks info for the Sola Scala Zero. We hope that this has been uh, helpful for you. If you have any questions about this grinder, please feel free to drop them below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and get subscribed for more content surrounding Solus and a bunch of other cool brands and machines that we have coming up. Thanks. Oh, yes.